I am going to um, get us started. So we generally uh, record these sessions so that for folks who do not get an opportunity to jump on with us, they can listen afterwards. It's always great if you're on because you can be a part of the conversation. Um, more specific examples are always helpful. I can understand if you don't want to give a more specific example. Um, but any context that you can offer in these conversations is helpful. And then if you do want to have a more specific conversation, but not on the recording, we're also welcome to jump on a call afterwards and kind of flesh out what your individual scenario is. Everybody's got some very interesting uh, things going on today. Um, I'm gonna jump in. Well, I'll go over the slides and then we'll do a little bit of Q&A after the fact. Um, and as I said, most of the content here is fairly general, fairly generalizable. We'll just go over some high level topics. Um, certification. <clears throat> so we spoke about the difference a little bit between certification and certificate programs because SIVA, is it SIVA? Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, it's SIVA. SIVA, okay, because SIVA mentioned creating a training. So. Generally, when you want to train people and then certify them in that training, we refer to it as a certificate program. Generally, a certification is when we want to certify that people that have a certain uh, competency or required skills, knowledge, and ability in a specific job that they're already performing. So we're not necessarily training them, although, uh, you know, they're still quite a bit of study that's involved for certification uh, credential preparation. And so that's why the two get confused quite a bit. It sounds like though that Valerie's working on a certification. It sounds like Steve is working on a certificate and Brandon maybe is not sure yet. Um, it could be, I think it, it, it might be a certificate just to get people up to date on what the latest threat is and then certify that they receive that knowledge and that they can stay, stay safe in that political space. Um, so it, when we talk about administration, for the most part, um, exam administration is partitioned out, I would say by, you know, first of all, by accreditation needs, if you are accredited, the more popular accreditation bodies are going to be ANAB and ICE, but they both, um, and you know, ANAB, ICE will, I don't know, maybe beg to differ, but uh, they, they're both based on the ISO 17024 um, guidelines, the ISO guidelines for uh, per, per personnel um, assessment. And so, uh, there might there are some other accrediting bodies out there if your uh, certification is more specific to a uh, specific industry like nursing specialty has their own accreditation board i think there are five or six others in specific um, industries as well um, but in general administration you know we're all thinking about the same things we're thinking about how to schedule candidates we're thinking about instructions to share for them. We're thinking about how to identify them securely, especially in this environment now where we're doing a lot of things remotely. Um, and then we're thinking about um, processes such as appeals processes. Um, I think people more so are thinking about feedback, even though I wanna say historically, we haven't done a good job of collecting a lot of feedback from our candidates, but moving forward, I think, especially when we are in a climate where, we, where we're transitioning to remote in a lot of cases, and we're also um, looking at diversity and integrating um, you know, different types of people into exams, we want to more and more be looking at how we can be getting feedback, particularly from our candidates who have failed. And that can be a contentious space. Maybe you have a third party that's focusing on doing that, or maybe you have some other methodology that you want to share, but um, that's an area too, an area of importance. Um, so exam scheduling, does anyone want to talk about their exam scheduling process? 
Well, like I said before, we use a third party to actually do the proctoring. So as mm. a part of our process, um, people first have to apply. Mm -hmm. And um, then we have to prove that they're eligible to take the exam. Mm -hmm. um, once we prove that they are eligible to take the exam, then we will schedule, we will enter them into our scheduling system. They get an email telling them how to um, schedule their exam. Mm -hmm. um, then once they go in and take the exam, um, we actually get the results like within two to five minutes after the exam has been submitted. Mm, okay. Um, so your, your booking and scheduling process was a lot more fun when we were doing a lot of this manually. <laughs> Most of this now is done with some kind of a software or, you know, an integration of different softwares that kind of play together to integrate some scheduling and some rescheduling, um, functionality for your candidates. Um, if you're managing candidates that are in different time zones, that can also be a lot of fun. Uh, and then if you have, uh, you know, if you have board members that like to change their mind about things, that can also be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, instructions. So this, I wanted to talk about instructions, but actually wanted to talk uh, also maybe about preparation. I mean, exam instructions is a part of preparation um, no matter what you're doing you want to have you want to have instructions available for your candidates um, candidates should be able to read and review instructions um, whenever they're getting ready to you know I think that sometimes in exam testing we get very concerned about what we want to share and what we don't want to share and you know, exam instructions are not confidentiality or secure content. And so I would say, make your exam instructions as readily available for your candidates as you can so that they can be preparing, so they can be preparing their space and so that they know what to expect and so that they're not super nervous when they get to the experience and so that they're not surprised when there's something that pops up that they, that they weren't expecting or weren't familiar with. Um, the newest thing that I'll talk about in the exam instruction space that I see here is that uh, data privacy piece. Um, there are a lot of changes to data privacy that are coming down the pike right now, and they make for a very interesting environment. Um, I think what a lot of folks are doing is putting together maybe a board or committee specifically for like the data privacy and security stuff. Um, and those data privacy security slash like AI people will handle, and by say handle, when I say handle, I mean have conversations about <laughs> um, the various changes that are coming down the pike in these spaces because they are a fast moving environment. And no matter what you decide to do for your particular exam, you have to sort of, you just have to choose something, choose how you're gonna address um, security and or data privacy and or AI in your area and you know share that with your organization and then share that in some way with the candidates. 